rise that range once more. Bring me my boots and saddle. La da da, la da da. Thank you. That's enough for me. Come on, Miss Huntley. Have a good game. Oh, not too exciting. That water looks good. Here, hold it. Can't win like that, Miss Huntley. <laughs> Can you imagine what they'd say if any of us did a thing like that? Well, not the granddaughter of the great Jeremiah Huntley. That does make a difference, doesn't it? About ten million dollars worth. Do you mind if I borrow this, Mr. Parker? Why, certainly not. <laughs> There's nerve for you. I'll get it back from her, Aggie. You do nothing of the sort. I'll send the bellboy off to it. And I'll see that this sort of thing goes no further. I'm sorry, Pat, but I had to attend to a little business. What's the matter? Did you fall in the pool? No, I jumped in. You're as bad as grandfather. I thought people came up here to get away from business. Let me have a cigarette. I'm afraid that's not going to do your rug any good, Hendrick. No, I suppose not, but I can't very well offend Miss Huntley. I can't understand what you see in that fellow Mabel. She's nothing but a male clothes ball. Now don't get yourself in enough for Grumpy. Remember your blood pressure. A lot you care about my blood pressure. You just do things to annoy me. I tell you, I don't like him. <laughs> you will when you get to know him better. Mr. Maybrook, please. Sorry, Miss Huntley, but Mr. Maybrook isn't in. He left word he'd be back in about two hours. Waiting long? Just a few minutes. Hello, Frank. Hello, Courtney. New bag, eh? Uh-huh. It's imported. Like it? Got all the latest improvements. Very neat. And don't let Manning chisel you on this lot. They're worth 50000 if they're worth a nickel. Think you could stand my company for a few days, darling? Frank and I have decided to mutiny. We're tired of being buried alive in Mexico. Yeah. We thought we'd come back to our own country for the weekend. Think that's wise, Frank? Listen, I'm tired of being cooped up in that dobe shack. Oh, I know it hasn't been pleasant for you, dear, and you've been a good sport to put up with it as long as you have. Say, do you think it's been easy for me? I've missed you, too. But now that everything's Nick, going... Nick, Nick. Here comes the law. How do you do? Good morning. you folks are on the wrong side of the line. But we're Americans. They've been living in Mexico for a short time. Came over to spend a few days at the Desert Springs Hotel, you know, for a little recreation. 
Well, I hate to be a killjoy, but they'll have to come through the regular port of entry. But that means going about 10 miles out of our way. My name is Maybrook. I'm a guest at the Desert Springs. This lady and gentlemen are friends of mine. Couldn't I be responsible for them? Sorry, Mr. Maybrook. Couldn't you just pretend you didn't see us, officer? Sorry. You mean you're going to get tough about it? I'm afraid I'll have to. Well, of all the... Well, I guess if we have to go back, why, we'll have to go back. <laughs> come on, Myra. See you later, Courtney. I'll come over and see you. I've offended your friend. Oh, I see your point. Suppose if I were in your place, I'd have done the same thing. Cigar? No, thanks. Well, so long. Adios. Getting them today from Myra and Adams, one of those border cops spotted us and chased them back across the line. Did he? Uh... No, no, he didn't get wise, but he certainly threw a scare into me. Oh, maybe just as well. Make you a little more careful. Count on me at any time. And don't forget, you promised me a look in the moonlight. You'd better find out if Senorita can cook. Oh, I was just practicing from a lift. What lesson? Here's the book. You won't tell nobody, will you? No. I can see you're studying to be a heartbreaker. Oh, quit kidding, Bob. You know I always wanted to be a guy. Don't you think I'm getting a strong personality? Oh, we've got a strong personality, all right, but it smells just a little too much of the stable. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll fix that up. What are you doing here? Oh, Captain Stevens is putting me on a new job. Which one of the guys took a party over the Grove yesterday? Slim Martin, I think. Why? Captain Stevens wants me to read the riot act to him. Somebody went away and left something burning in the restricted area. Really started a brush fire. Slim wouldn't do that. I'll bet I know who it was. Miss Huntley. She's always a smoker. And she don't care where she throws them. Who's Miss Huntley? Oh, you know, Miss Patricia Huntley from, uh, from New York. Well, you better tip off Slim to keep her from smoking in restricted areas. You don't know Miss Huntley. She wants to smoke, she's gonna smoke. Oh, she is, huh? I said she would, I believe she would, I know she would. I'll bet she won't. Well, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to leave you, Manning. I've got a date with Miss Huntley. Miss Huntley, eh? Shooting rather high, aren't you? Well, why not? Might as well go for the bullseye. I don't know what I'm going to do with that girl, Collins. She's too much for me. Quite so, sir. It's too bad Miss Patricia is uh, uh, the way she is, sir. What do you mean by that? I just uh, uh, meant that she's a, a 
a little bit uh, unruly, sir. Nothing of the sort. Impulsive, that's all. Girl of very fine character. I just want to tell Miss Huntley it's against the law to smoke in restricted areas, that's all. Just the same, Bob. You better let me talk to her. You see, she's pretty quick on the trigger. You have to handle her very carefully. I know, I know. I got a pretty good line on Miss Huntley from Chuck. I've seen her kind before. You can't handle them with kid gloves. You've got to tell them. Why, uh, uh, what are you trying to say? Well, uh, <laughs> you see, Miss Huntley, smoking is prohibited in closed areas. And uh, I'm asking you to be a little more careful. That's all. What is it, sir? <laughs> it seems this young man objects to smoking. Sure is a prize, ain't she? Right, huh? I'd hate to win her in a raffle. Hey, Bob, you got a minute? What do you want? You notice anything? What? I put some cologne on me. How'd I spell now? Terrible. We've been together a good deal in the past few weeks, Pat. Enough for me to know that I care for you more than anyone I've ever met. You like a great many of the same things, and there's no reason now why... Now, be careful, Courtney. Or I might take all this as a proposal. Oh, now, don't get peevish, Courtney. I know you like me, and I like you. But somehow, I just can't be romantic in the sunlight. I need a poetic background. A beautiful moon and, oh, soft moon. Well, supposing I arrange all these things. What would you say then? Put out that cigarette, please. Well, that isn't some little tin soldier again. See that sign? This is a closed area. Aren't you taking your job a bit too seriously? Put that out. Guess there's no use talking to you, is there? All right. There's only one way to handle you, young lady. What's this? Citation. After you've had a talk with Captain Stevens, maybe you'll take this thing a little more seriously. <laughs> oh, look, it got all torn. Oh, is that so? Hmm. Yeah, you better give me another one? No. This time I'm going to personally escort you to headquarters. Now, look here, aren't you going a bit too far? You keep out of it. Come on, get on your horse. You heard what I said? Get on your horse. I'd like to see you make me. Oh, Captain. I've never been so humiliated in all my life. We simply went in this red. I had just lighted a cigarette when I looked up and saw the sign, no smoking. And naturally, I wouldn't think of breaking the law. I was just about to put out my cigarette when this man came in. I tried to explain, but he wouldn't listen. And the way he talked, I'd never heard such language in all my life. I'm surprised at you, Wallace. I'm just as surprised as you are, Captain. You should have seen the way he manhandled me. Wallace, this service does not approve of such high-handed methods. You owe Miss Huntley an apology. 
serious, Captain? Certainly I'm serious. Miss Huntley, I think you've had a brain lapse. I can't quite recall using any abusive language or saying anything you couldn't repeat out loud. However, you say I did, and I'd be the last one to call a lady a liar. Therefore, I hope you forgive me. Does that cover the situation, Captain? Yes. Now you can have my badge. Manning. You seem particularly pleased with yourself this morning. I am. I've just been across the line to see Adams and Myra. Bring anything back with you? Yeah. Swell idea. How much is the Borloff necklace worth? Are you kidding? No. What did it bring? It'd bring you a lot of trouble if you tried to lift it. You're not feeling Why not? Right. No more dangerous than the trinkets we've been bringing over. Well, if you're afraid to handle it, I'll get somebody else. I didn't say I was afraid to handle it. When do you think you'll get it here? Well, I can't say positively, but within the next few days. You don't know all I could, Miss Huntley. Lawless can be pretty obstinate. What do you say? Go ahead, Captain Stevens. I made overtures to him three or four times in the last couple of days. But he won't listen to me. Thanks for trying anyway, Captain. No use. Wallace refuses to be reinstated. Well, what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? I'm not responsible, am I? Well, maybe he needs a job. Well, you should have thought of that before you started all this fuss. Well, I didn't think he put his job over. But maybe if you spoke to Mr. Hendricks, you might find him something to do. I do nothing of the kind. Now, let me tell oh, you. Oh, now, Grumpy, don't go. I know everything you're going to say, and you're absolutely right. But you simply must do something. Now, I'll see you later. Collins. Collins. Collins! I... Oh. Where have you been? Mr. Hendricks on the phone. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> These must deserve me rest. A personally conducted. Where's your uniform? I outgrew it. In other words, I quit. You quit? What are you going to do now? Oh, I don't know. Hendricks just sent for me, but I don't know what he wants. Maybe he's going to give you a job. Maybe. I could use a job. See you later. <laughs> hey, Ed. Hi, boy. Hello, Bob. Made any plans for yourself yet? Nothing definite. I thought from your message you had something in mind. Well, yes, that is in a way. Uh, one of the guests spoke to me about you. I think it might be to your advantage to have a talk with him. Well, who is it? What does he want me to do? Well, all I know is that he asked me to have you come here and see him. You'll find him in suite 212. Okay, thanks, Ed. Don't mess with him. My name's Wallace. I was sent by Mr. Hendricks. Oh, yes, Mr. Wallace. Come in. I'll tell Mr. Hunt you. Huntley? Oh, I guess I must be in the wrong place. No, you're not. Come over here, young man. Sit down. Wipe that scowl off your face. I heard about that running you had with my granddaughter. Oh, you're going to give it to me too, huh? No, I'm not. I want you to know that I sympathize with you entirely. You sympathize with me? Yes. 
What the pay you on that job? Not enough to retire on. Why? Well, I think you've been done a great injustice. It's only right that I should compensate you. That's out. I don't want any of your money, Mr. Huntley. Well, why not? It's coming to you. I don't want you to harbor any ill feeling toward my granddaughter. I don't. You don't? No. The girl is spoiled. She's a good example of a bad bringing up. Huh, bad bringing up. I've raised her myself, young man. I'll admit that she's a trifle headstrong and a bit willful, but that was born in her. Born in a horse, too, until you break him of it. Are you comparing my granddaughter to a horse? I simply mean the method of handling is the same. Once you slap a bridle on a horse, it's easy to guide. Once you slap a bridle on a horse, Slap the bridle on. Say that again, young man. Once you slap a bridle on a horse, it's easy to guide. Let me have twenty-five dollars, please, and put it on the bill. Certainly, Miss Huntley. Thank you very much. Any time, Miss Huntley. Will you uh, sign the receipt, please? Can you sign it? Thank you. Oh, Mr. Wallace. Yes, I'm afraid it is. Oh, Mr. Wallace, I can imagine what you think of me. About the other day, I mean. I'm terribly sorry, and I'd like to apologize. Don't mention it, Miss Huntley. Oh, I don't know whatever possessed me to act the way I do. You were an awfully good sport about it. I believe me when I say that I never did a thing like that before. Sure, I believe you. Does that make you feel any better? Heaps, if you really mean it. I didn't realize that things would end the way they did. That you'd lose your job, I mean. Oh, that's all right. I have another one. You have? Mm -hmm. Here at the hotel? Yes. Well, that's splendid. You got it? Mm -hmm. Perhaps I could impose on you sometime to show me some of the more interesting sights. Any time at all, Miss Huntley. It would be a pleasure. All right, that's a date. Oh, Pat. Wasn't that Wallace I saw you talking to? Yeah. Say, uh, what does Wallace want? Nothing. I met him accidentally. He's going to work here. I'll meet you on the court as soon as I change. All right. Afraid you're going to have a little opposition? Yeah, not the kind you mean. That's the copper who stopped Adams and Meyer at the border. He's going to work here. I don't like that. What are you worrying about? Didn't you say he was out of the service? Yeah, but you know those guys. Once the service is in their blood, it never leaves. Once a snooper, always a snooper. It does complicate things, doesn't it? I think I'll run into Chicago. I have a little business to attend to, and when you're ready, you can send me a wire. I don't think it'd be the least bit interesting. Then why do you want to know? Because you don't want to tell me. See, there's a reason and a method to my silence. Perhaps I'm doing it to keep you interested. Oh, did someone say I was interested? Well, pardon me. I guess I took too much for granted. Now that your life is such a closed sport, and we have the music and the moonlight, what else do you talk about? Hmm. How's your grandfather? Grandfather's fine. Oh, by the way, you two seem to have hit it off in great shape. Yes, we uh, found that we both have something in common. Well, I'm awfully glad. There are so few people drunk to take to me. You've really been very kind, Bob. I mean, about giving up so much of your time to your both. Kind? Do you suppose you could spare me a little, Pat? Oh, hello, Courtney. Evening, Mr. Maybrook. I'll look for you after dinner. Oh, Bob showed me around the corral. It was very interesting. He's quite an expert on horse legs. There's nothing strange about that, is there? I imagine a great deal of Wallace's time has been spent around the state. He should be able to pick out a good horse when he sees one. Hey, Wallace? Oh, yeah. Pick out a good jackass, too. We're not keeping you from any of your little chores, are we, Wallace? Oh, no. Chores all the same. The idea I'm trying to convey is that sometimes when two people wish to speak privately together, 
Oh, you're not intruding at all, Mr. Maybrook. I don't make myself quite clear. Do you suppose I could prevail on you to excuse yourself for a few minutes? Oh, sure. I get it. I'm so sorry. I just remembered I had a date with your grandfather to play chess. Hope you folks will pardon me for running away so abruptly. Evening, evening. Evening. Smart, Ellie. <laughs> What's so funny? You. You see, do you realize I've hardly seen you at all this week? Yes. Copper, you've been swimming together, eating together, riding together. You're together constantly, and I don't like it. Oh, that's too bad. You may as well understand, Courtney. I've never let anyone run my life. I'm not going to begin now. You're about a week late with that decision, aren't you? What do you mean? Do you remember complaining about the high diving board that was taken down from the pool? Why do you think that was done? It's being repaired. That's what they told you. But Mr. Wallace thought it was too dangerous. You so he had it removed. Wallace? Yes. Why do you suppose you weren't able to get that black horse to ride yesterday? Well, he's gone lame. Oh, nonsense. Chuck told me that Wallace left strict orders for you not to ride that horse. So you see, Mr. Wallace has been putting the brakes on you quite effectually. But why should he? You think he's been hanging around because he's interested in you personally. I believe that he's being paid for his little attention by your grandfather. If I thought he'd do a thing like that to me. I think it's a dirty trick. Everyone around the hotel is wise to what's going on. They're getting a good laugh out of it. They are, are they? Sure they are. I haven't done a thing. I haven't had to. You're the grandest. Great sense of humor in this bar. What's the matter, Pipe? I want to talk to you. Well, I guess I'd better. This concerns you, too. Is he working for you? What? Well, what do you mean? Is he working for me? You know what I mean. Did you hire him? Well, I don't know. I, you wanted me to get him a job, didn't you? Yes, but not of my keeper. You, you sneak. You pretended that you liked to be with me because I was such good company. But I did everything so well. And all the time... No, 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 please, please, please. Now, it wasn't my fault. You see, uh, yeah, you keep constantly doing things that embarrass me. Embarrass you, eh? You don't know what embarrassment means. I'm embarrassed. I'm sorry, Miss Huntley, but I've been ordered to limit you to one drink every three hours. Who gave you that order? Mr. Wallace. Never mind, Mr. Wallace. You do as I say. I can't do that, Miss Huntley. I'm sorry. It might cost me my job. What do you mean by interfering with me? Grandfather's wishes. Is that so? If I want a drink, I'll get a drink. I'll show you. And if I can't get the hero going to town again, a barrel full, two barrels full. The gasoline has been drained out, Miss Huntley. Well, fill it up. You doing okay for Mr. Wallace? Nice moonlight night. Like to go for a ride? Not with you. Where's 
my breakfast, Holly. I'm sorry, Miss Patricia. Mr. Wallace gave orders that you were to have no more breakfast in bed. Hey, Bob. Hello, Jim. <laughs> when did you blow in here? Last night. Sit here. Thanks, right, thanks. Right. Hey, don't tell me the Border Patrol rates this kind of luxury. Oh, no. I resigned nearly two weeks ago. I have a private job now. What are you after this time, Jim? Call it necklace. It was snapped in Mexico a short time ago. The department thinks they may try to sneak it through here. Are these leads or just working on a hunch? Well, we picked up a fellow named Manning in Chicago the other day. A high class tenant. In going through his effects, he found a receipted bill from this hotel. I figure he was hanging around here waiting for the necklace and something probably scared him off. I want to see if I can't pick up his trail from here. If anyone can wear that necklace back to headquarters, you can. Thanks. <laughs> I'd like to. It's a $25,000 reward for its recovery. Mm -hmm. Have you ordered the door? No, I haven't. Thank you. Room and tell him Miss Adams is on her way up. Yes, sir. Mr. Mabel's room, please. Hello, darling. Hello. Hello, Frank. What's the matter? I expected you an hour ago. Now, ain't that too bad? We're lucky we got here at all. Why? What's wrong? They tightened up at the customs office. They're putting everybody through a ringer. Why, they searched it clear down to your skin. They didn't find it on you, did they? Nah. I thought it was something wrong the minute we drove up there. So I sent Johnson back to the Hacienda with it. Did they suspect anything? Say, listen, those guys were born suspicious. As far as we're concerned, they ain't got a chance to sneak it over. What a break. This one hole would have put us on easy street. And I ain't gonna take any more chances coming through that fence again. You two better beat it back across the line right away. Afraid Miss Huntley will find out about me? Don't be silly, sweetheart. You know how you stand with me. I'm beginning to have a pretty good idea. You're stuck on that dame. You don't want her to see me. That's why you kept us cooped up in Mexico like a couple of sand fleas. You're crazy. I've just been kidding around with her. And it's a good thing I have, too. Because why? Because she's going to bring that necklace across the line for us. No customs officer would suspect her. Give me that bag. Today's a happy day down at the farm where the bullfrog family stayed. Five little frogs were born at dawn. Today's the day of days. Uncle Billy Bullfrog, he's their dad. And mercy, what a swell head. He croaks quite loud. Not bad, not bad. And here's what more frogs say. It's just five times the ordinary trouble. I'm all in, all in, all in. Now, forget, don't you dare to confess, or I'll call snake doctor they And you cut out your lily pad items, and you go where the bad frogs go. Now, if you live, you can be in the movie. Big dough, big dough, big dough. Then daddy won't have to mend your duty with no dough, no dough, no dough. What's the matter, Miss Huntley? Oh, Chuck, I'm so unhappy. You're unhappy? Oh. I can't stand it much longer. I suppose you think I'm a terrible baby. But if someone had been persecuting your sister or someone you cared for, what would you do? I'd stop him on the nose. Oh, I'll bet you're awfully strong, Chuck. I'll bet you could sock a man a terrible blow. You said it, Miss Huntley. When I sock them, they say sock. I wish you liked me well enough to sock someone for me. It'd be a pleasure, Miss Huntley. 
Would you do it to anybody, Chuck? No matter who it is? You bet I would. You just lead me to it. Here he comes, now. Remember what you promised, Chuck. Now go get him. Hey, you. I want to talk to you. You gotta cut it out. Well, you gotta quit persecuting Miss Huntley, or you'll have to answer to me. Hey, you better get wise to yourself, or I'll take that suit away from you. Well, what are you waiting for? Why didn't you do what you said? Talk to him. Well, you take my suit away from me. You big ox, you jellyfish. After all the big talk you made. Easy now. Don't take your spite out on him. That's not being a good sport, you know. Don't talk to me, you big bully. You can't make me do what I don't want to do, even if Grandmother does pay you for it. And I'll get even with you for everything. You, you nursemaid, I hate you. You don't hate me. You just dislike me a little. No, I don't. You don't dislike me? No. I mean, yes. And don't laugh at me or I'll slap your face. You do, and I'll give you a good paddling. Don't think you can scare me. pal you turned out to be. After I talked Hendricks into giving you that guy job, you let her vamp you into wanting to stop me. Well, Bob, I couldn't help it. Fascinated. Fascinated you. Well, she said you kept persecuting her and all. She kind of wrapped me right around her finger. I never did see such a girl. Neither did I. I have no idea where Miss Patricia went. No, sir, she didn't say. Well, have her give me a ring when she gets back, will you? Yeah, sir. What's the matter? Wallace, he was going to beat me. Oh, nonsense. He wouldn't dare do a thing like that. You were right, Courtney. This is all fight work on his part. He hates me. And to think Gruffy let him do these things to me. That rough neck must have hypnotized your grandfather. Well, I'm not going to let them treat me like this. I'll get back at them. I'll show them. I'll make them sorry they ever started anything like this. That's absurd. Come on now, no more blues. I almost forgot what I came over for. You like it? Oh, for me? No, thanks, Courtney. I love it. Pick it up the last time I was in Mexico. Oh, how sweet of you, Courtney. You're so thoughtful. You know how I feel about you, Pat. You're the only one that's nice to me. Oh, Courtney, I'm so miserable. Oh, you poor darling. <laughs> Maybe we've been going too strong on this thing, Bob. Pat's high-spirited. He has spirit, all right. I suppose I'm an old fool, but I just can't bear to see her unhappy. Let's call the whole thing off. Oh, no, no. I don't want you to feel that way about it, Bob. It was a mistake to ever start this thing in the first place. Is that the way you feel about it, Bob? Yes. You don't think you want to go on with it? No. I'm sorry. Here, you want this? Oh, gee, thanks, Bob. Won't that look slick with my new outfit? I don't get the idea you're pulling out in such a hurry. Well, I thought you were sitting on top of the world. Well, I just decided the place doesn't agree with me. What's the matter? The grub? The whole thing. I guess it's too rich for my blood. that Manning and this fellow Maybrook have been very intimate. Maybrook, huh? Yeah. Say, what do you know about this Huntley dame? What do you mean? She and this fellow Maybrook are pretty pally, aren't they? Well, uh, they're friendly. Why? What are you getting at? Well, I know that some dame, an American, good-looking, has been making trips back and forth from this hotel to Mexico. And she's a friend of Maybrook. And if it's Miss Huntley, who is it? It isn't. 
she carries the stones over and Manning buys them. She doesn't need the money. Her grandfather's worth millions. Oh, give me the money, get out there. It's a thrill. I've been getting a line on this country. And she's just about as wild as anything. I'm just hoping they try to sneak that necklace over. It'll mean 25,000 bucks for me and a good long stretch in a federal prison for them. And the old man still I want to talk with Miss Huntley. Quickly, please. Well, try and find her. She must be someplace around the hotel. This is very important. Bob! Bob! Freezy! Freezy! Have you seen Patricia? Yeah, here, Bob. Freezy! Freezy! I don't know how long they've been gone. Oh, it's all my fault. I've been a fool. Can I take this off? Suddenly take my car. Take anything. Judge Alvarez, just telephone. He will be here any minute now. Thank you. I am having a special room decorated for the ceremony. If I had known in time, I would make the plans for one big celebration. Oh, it's all right, Carlos. What you have will do very well. <laughs> we tell you that, yes. There you are. Now, that's what I call cooperation. The judge leaves his business. The proprietor turns over his private office for the ceremony. All in the interest of romance. Here's to the future Mrs. Maybrook. Oh, here's a bit of luck. There's an old acquaintance of mine. Can you pardon me a few minutes? I hear about you going to get married. Is that on the level? Sure, why not? Waiting for the judge now. You're letting yourself in on something, ain't you? Yeah, about 10 million bucks. Have you seen anything of a young lady and a gentleman in a big open car? See, si, they went through a York short time ago. Thank you. Quite an experience to me. Thank you. Being an old bachelor, I'm sure I'm going to get quite a thrill out of it. But this is my first attempt at giving the bride away. <laughs>
to get married. Oh, you want to get married, senor? Yes, yes. Where do I go to have the ceremony performed? Uh -huh. But where is the senorita? <laughs> She's probably there waiting for me. See, si, senor, senorita's always first. That's right. When I get married, I get like you all nervous and shake like. <laughs> but my conchita, she's nice and calm. Yeah, 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 that's wonderful. I'd love to hear some more of it, but I haven't got time. I'm in a hurry now. Would you mind telling me where I should go? Oh, you wait, little see, yeah. senor. You go down the street and you go the other way. There's two blocks below, see? There's a house. Yeah. That's not the house. No. No, you go through the walk before, and then when you come back, you yeah. should come the other way. It's much easier for you. But this way you go and see a red house with the sign says, yes. Judge Albert. Because yes. my nephew lives there too. Oh, thank you very much. all the arrangements. It's too late to stop now. Well, I tell you, I can't do it. Now, you understand this. I haven't come all the way down here to let you make a chump out of me. I 
Look, I didn't really want to marry him. I was just doing it for spite. But I wouldn't have gone through with it. I don't suppose you'd have even tried to stop me if it hadn't been for Grandfather. We'll take that up at the next meeting. We've got a lot of running to do now. There they are. Think you can hold out? Sure. And I'll promise you one thing. You won't have any more trouble with me after today. You said a mouthful. I won't be here after today. Why? Where are you going? What do you care? Serious. Can't be just us they're after. Hey, let me see that bag of yours for a minute. I threw it away. It was a present from Courtney. Oh, so he gave it to you, huh? Yes, the hotel just before we came over here. Pat, we've got to get that bag back. Now you wait here and I'll go back and get it. No, I'll go with you. You're going. You weren't in any hurry, were you? Where's that bag? I haven't got it. You got it? I guess. Lay it on him. All right, smart guy. What'd you do with it? What do you do with it? Tell him I... nothing. Shut up! You coward! Pipe down, you. Now, get this. If you think anything of your friend, you better open up. You'll tell us where that bag is, or we'll plug him. You wouldn't dare. All right, Johnson. Oh, no, no, I'll tell you. Yeah, now you're getting sensible, Pat. Where is it? Will you promise not to hurt Bob? Certainly. All we want is that bag. Come on, make it snappy. You better speak up. I... I threw it away. Oh. Well, if you're gonna stall... Wait a minute. Now, listen, Patricia. We mean business. Well, do you better go to lie? I'm not. I tell you, I threw it away back there. Let me go and I'll find it. All right. Adam, you and Johnson keep your eye on this guy. I'll see whether she's telling the truth or not. Come on, Pat. I think we pulled a boner letting Maybrook go down there alone. Suppose he pulls a sneak. I was just thinking the same thing. Maybe we ought to trail after him, huh? What about this guy? We don't want to lug him along. All right, all right. It was somewhere around here. Get on your feet. On your feet. Keep them up. Keep them up. Get them up high. Up with them. Now back over by him. Oh, there it is. Time, Wallace. You ain't gonna get away with this stuff. Well, I think you've been wasting most of your life. Back up here, you. No, I won't go with you. I won't. Now, you listen to me. I don't want to get rough with you, Pat. You're going with me until I can get clear of that bunch back there. They'll kill Bob if I don't go back. Gentlemen, I will see you later.
You're making me nervous. You don't have to hold that gad on us. Sorry, but it's Mr. Wallace's 